this is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, February 8th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. The battle for search supremacy is heating up. For years, if you wanted to find things online, you Googled it. Now, Microsoft is making a big push to challenge that by integrating artificial intelligence into its Bing search engine. Microsoft announced on Tuesday that it was leaning on its multi-year, multi-billion dollar partnership with startup OpenAI to incorporate a chatbot similar to ChatGPT that will be front and center on Bing's homepage. Wall Street Journal senior personal tech columnist Joanna Stern sat down with Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella to talk about the new feature. So the entire point of ChatGPT early on was to just sort of show the power of the large model and the conversational intelligence. We now have not only the current information that you usually expect from a search engine, Mm -hmm. but you can then have a full conversation around that current information and all the other information that came before. The WSJ's Joanna Stern is with us now to talk about the new bang and her conversation with Satya Nadella. Hi, Joanna. How's Washington State? You know, rainy, as you would expect, but very smart. AI-generated smart. I'm also very tired. It's been a long couple of days, okay? Fair. And in that couple of days, you got to try out this new version of Bing. Can you tell us what it's like? Yeah. I've been talking to computers here in Redmond. That's what I've been doing. I did. I have been testing out this new version of Bing, which if you've used ChatGPT, won't seem so foreign to you, but it's better than ChatGPT in a lot of ways. But to back up, really, Microsoft is rethinking Bing entirely here. The new homepage for Bing is going to have a new box. It's going to say, ask me anything. And you can put in there your usual search queries. Or you can really talk to it like it's a chat bot, right? So you can put in something like, and this is one of the queries I've been using, give me a recap of the 2023 Grammy winners. And yes, you'll get your usual list of links and sites that have covered the Grammys. But you'll also start to see a little bot typing away and trying to answer those questions, very similar to ChatGPT. But there are two things that are different here. The first is that this is based on real-time search data. This is based on what's in Bing. So it's current, right? ChatGPT stuck in 2021 on that data set. The second thing that it does differently, and this is something I really think is great, there are citations. So it says under each sentence or every few sentences where that information is from. It's a clickable link. So if it's from CNN or the Huffington Post or the Wall Street Journal, you can then click to those links and read more about what this chatbot has told you. So that sounds like it gets at the heart of one issue that ChatGPT comes up with a lot. You know, is it incorrect or where did the information come from? One of the other issues that people have had, though, with ChatGPT is the speed of it. Can you explain kind of what that issue is and how Microsoft plans to address it? Yeah, so there's two things on the speed. The first is that actually it takes these really, really supercomputers longer to answer these questions because not only is it trying to figure out what you just said. And so what is that question? But then it's trying to answer that like a human, right? So that takes a lot of computing power. It also takes more computing power to then feed in the information for the answer. This is a huge model, right? So this is what takes a lot of time. That is somewhat better here. Back to that Grammy answer. It took about a minute for that full answer to show itself on the page. And that's quite a bit of time, right? You might not want to wait that long for something. So you could tell it like, please keep your answer shorter. Or there are going to be certain places where you just want to use regular search. The second place that there's been criticism of ChatGPT, and I have this issue a lot, I go to the site and the servers are down, or we're running at capacity or something like that. Microsoft is trying to improve that. And I spoke to Mr. Nadella about that. And here's what he said. We have built out in Azure some very robust infrastructure for inference at scale. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's what gives us even the ability on day one to have enough capacity to launch something like this. But at the same time, we're going to have uh, to scale this carefully. We don't know what the traffic is going to look like, uh, what the query patterns are going to look like. These are really early days. What about getting things wrong? What about mistakes that come up in these answers? Microsoft is not saying this is going to be 100% accurate all the time. It says it's still learning. This is still based on 
early AI research and early AI models. This is not where we're going to be in the future, right? This is still a new area. But they are going to do some things to make it clearer that this may not be something that is 100% right. So it's been programmed to use phrases like, this is not the definitive answer, or it might say, this may be or this might be the right answer. Joanna, you said you got to play around with this new bang before you spoke with Satya Nadella. Was it helpful in your research before you did the interview? I did use it to compose some questions for my interview as I got the demo and I got to play around with it before I got to sit down with him. So I said, okay, let's see what this wants me to ask him. Truth was, I had some of those questions on my list. They definitely didn't sound as smart or as witty as me, I would say, but they were good. But one of the cool things you can do is then engage with it. So I it wrote these questions for Mr. Nadella for me, but then I could say, hey, answer that question, number five, in the voice of Mr. Nadella. So for me as a journalist, it's a good way to practice interviews. Can anyone use this new version of Bing? Yes, anyone can sign up to use this version of Bing. Is that a good nuanced answer for you there? It was rolled out on Tuesday in a limited preview. And then you have to sign up at bing.com and you can hopefully get on the waiting list and, and start using it. But the biggest asterisk right now is that you have to have the Microsoft Edge browser, which is available for Windows and Mac. So you've got to use it, which, by the way, is the browser I use. And I think it is a very good browser. What did Nadella say about competition with Google? Because there's been a lot of speculation that this is their big play to, to unseat Google and its supremacy in the search market. From talking to Mr. Nadella and other Microsoft executives over the last few days, you can really see how excited they are about this technology and that they really think they have something to finally compete with Google, right? Google holds 93% of the global search engine market share. That leaves Bing with so much less, really not even on the map. And so their hope here is just to capture a little bit of that. Here's what Mr. Nadella had to say about that. At the end of the day, we're grounded in the fact that, you know, Google dominates this space. And so I am thrilled for finally some competition. Uh, and uh, so I, I feel like a new race is starting with a complete new platform technology. Uh, and now it's a question of us and them actually innovating, releasing things into the real world. Does Microsoft plan to incorporate this AI technology anywhere else? I think the question is, where don't they plan to put this AI technology? It is very clear they want to put this in all of their products. It's already making its way into Microsoft Teams with transcripts and summaries of meetings. It is already making it into some of their coding products. GitHub Copilot is one of the products they own. Mr. Nadella also confirmed that they are going to put it in Microsoft Office. He didn't announce timing on that, but it is coming. It's very clear that this is how they want Microsoft to be known now as this AI leading company. All right. That was our senior personal tech columnist, Joanna Stern. Joanna, thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.